Every day we live with the Omicron variant of COVID-19 is another day for scientists and researchers to crunch the data. Now today, Discovery Health released real-world information of over 200,000 members who've had COVID-19. They've got some really interesting findings regarding the differences between Delta and Omicron. I'm joined now by Dr. Ryan Noach, CEO of Discovery Health. Dr. Noach, thanks for your time. Am I right in saying that your data is essentially getting similar results to the lab tests that we've seen around Omicron, uh, that two doses of Pfizer will still offer high protection from severe illness and death, but you are more vulnerable to breakthrough infections? Yes, absolutely, Sally, that's spot on. Uh, one component of what we released today is a detailed vaccine effectiveness, effectiveness analysis which we did in conjunction with the South African Medical Research Council, supported by Professor Glenda Gray. Um, it correlates with some of the in vitro or the laboratory testing. I think what's exciting about ours is that being at the center of the world's Omicron outbreak here in South Africa at the moment, we've been able to be the first to test vaccine effectiveness at scale. Uh, the results show that the vaccine, the, the Pfizer-BioNTech double-dose vaccine, in other words, what we would call fully vaccinated people here in South Africa, they have a 70% reduction in risk of admission to hospital in, after contracting an Omicron infection. So they are 70% less likely than an unvaccinated individual to require hospital admission or to contract severe disease. Talk to me about uh, the booster, the third dose. We, we've seen in the UK they're rolling out boosters. Obviously, they started their vaccination program a lot earlier than us. Here in South Africa, we're getting those boosters six months after our second Pfizer dose. Do you think that there's uh, a case to be made uh, for that third dose being given to individuals before six months? Uh, I can't really comment on the pre-six months interval. I think what is clear to us in the research is that the effectiveness has dropped from the Delta wave to this Omicron wave from 93% risk reduction against severe disease in Delta to 70% risk reduction in the Omicron wave. So that's quite a meaningful drop in vaccine effectiveness. This really reinforces the case for the need for boosters. Uh, we are strongly of the view that boosters will again lift this vaccine effectiveness number perhaps closer to where it was. Um, and so, you know, the six-month boost there is important, and we're delighted the Department of Health and SAPRA have approved that, and we're just awaiting initiation of the rollout. So the big question that we really want to know about is whether uh, the data is really showing us yet if Omicron is milder than Delta, stripping out the impact of vaccines to create a milder illness. Is the data showing that Omicron is actually a milder variant than Delta? The short answer is yes, indeed. And this is a very uh, encouraging finding and uh, a great message, and I'm optimistic about it. Just to give a caveat before I explain, the caveat is that we're only three weeks into this Omicron wave. And of course, you know, being so nascent, it's too early to predict and get overexcited. And we should certainly not change our behavior or become laser fair in any way or, or means. But our data shows that uh, the Omicron wave that we're experiencing now is 29% less severe than the Delta wave. Um, in, in, in clinical terms, you're 29% less likely to experience severe illness or require hospital admission in this current Omicron wave. We've heard lots of anecdotes coming out of hospital groups, uh, healthcare professionals, uh, the medical association and others reporting that they're seeing milder uh, disease on the ground. And uh, we're excited that the data bears that out. And, and when patients uh, go into hospital, they don't seem to be needing oxygen. And this is something that, uh, and even though it's early days, am I right? And is your data sort of proving this as well? that they don't arrive desperately needing oxygen, as we've seen in previous waves? Yes, uh, the data does support that. We're seeing much less acute respiratory distress um, than we were seeing in the prior waves. 
Uh, I think a great proxy for this is looking at the proportion of discovery members who are in hospital that required ICU care or high care, the specialized wards for really acutely ill patients. Whereas in the prior three waves, all three of them, about 30 to 35 percent of the patients in hospital required either high care or ICU at a point in time. In the Omicron experience to date, only 13 percent, uh, so that's way less than half, are requiring high care or ICU care. So as a proxy for severity, that gives you a very good idea that in general the patients that are in hospital are being cared for in the general wards and are more stable. Mm. So it's all pointing in the right direction. Um, and, and the point has been made a number of times is that in hospital, most of the people are unvaccinated. I wanted to, to probe that a little bit more. We know that yesterday the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson was saying, oh, we've had our first Omicron death. We don't have details on whether the person uh, died with or from Omicron. Uh, does any of your data show that uh, any people have been lost to Omicron already? Yes, um, I mean, the short answer again is yes, there's complexity to explain. Um, in the period which we believe, which the genetic testing in South Africa shows is now dominated almost 90% or more by Omicron, we've had ongoing member deaths. Um, and so we're, we're dealing still with a fairly large number and a growing number of deaths at the moment in wave four. And if you look at the South African Medical Research Council's natural excess death data, uh, for the week of the 28th of November, it has ticked up. Uh, not dramatically, and much less so than in the previous waves, but it's ticked up. So there are deaths. We believe they are attributable to Omicron. Um, you said an important thing. The majority of people in, in requiring hospitalization are unvaccinated, 75% or more. And in fact, about 90% of those who land up in ICU or high care are unvaccinated. Uh, so the vaccine is providing good protection. Um, and, and this is a critical feature. Uh, Sally, one additional comment. There's a risk of feeling complacent um, mm -hmm. and changing behavior. When listening to the story about lower severity, that would be completely the wrong thing to do. Yeah. Um, we're very early in the Omicron wave. The severity picture may change. And notwithstanding the fact that it has got lesser severity supported by the data now, it still causes death, as you're pointing out. Uh, and so we do need to remain vigilant, get vaccinated, and undertake all the necessary behaviors. Uh, very interesting information about differences in the clinical presentation, because a lot of people, I mean, first of all, it's everywhere. We all know people who've got this variant. So it's clearly a, a quick spreader, but it's presenting with slightly different symptoms. Uh, just talk us through those. Yes, we uh, worked with the uh, clinical director of the MediClinic Hospital Group um, and together with Intercare, the group of primary health care facilities, and we developed uh, a consensus position of the anecdotes from the health professionals on the ground. So this uh, uh, Omicron seems to have particular nuances relative to the presentation of prior COVID-19. Out of hospital, importantly, the incubation period seems shorter the time from which you were exposed to the time where you develop symptoms, that seems to be about three to four days quicker than previous. And the duration of the illness also seems to be shorter, lasting around three days as well. So this is a quicker incubation period, shorter lasting illness based on these anecdotes. And that illness itself is characterized by some of the same features, a sore throat, a fever, a headache, but particularly by myalgia, which is pain in the muscles. And a common feature actually seems to be lower back pain that a lot of people are reporting. And most people tend to get over this quite quickly. In the hospital, we're seeing less respiratory distress, as I described earlier. Um, and, uh, you know, these clinical features are nuanced and slightly different to what mm. we've been seeing previously. Talk to me about children, because of course children under 12 cannot be vaccinated in South Africa as yet. We've heard previously that children under 5 are or uh, of the children group, they are the more vulnerable. Um, what are we learning about children and Omicron, particularly as initially we heard about a lot of hospitalizations of children? Um, has that turned out to be less of a concern? 
it still remains a concern, to be frank and honest. Uh, the, non the, the South African um, Institute for, non -communic for Communicable Diseases made announcements around um, their observations from the uh, DATCOV database uh, around a higher severity in children. Our data, unfortunately, supports some of these early findings. Um, we are seeing roughly a 20% increase in the admission rate of children to hospital during the Omicron wave when comparing this to the uh, D614G wave, which was the first wave of COVID-19 in about July, August 2020. So we are seeing this 20% increase in the admission rate of children. Now, 20% may sound like a big number to you. It's a small number because it's 20% of the baseline admission rate. And the baseline admission rate is low to start off with. So this is a small increase. It's not reason for unnecessary alarm. In absolute terms, the number of infections and the number of hospitalizations of children are still low. Um, but we do need to watch this carefully. The one comfort I have um, is that over time, since the start of the Omicron wave over the past three weeks, we've seen a trend of this improving over time and becoming less of a concern. And I'm hoping that trend will continue and that we need not fret too much about this. Thank you so much for breaking down this really important information uh, from your members and their experiences with Omicron. Dr. Ryan Noach, CEO of Discovery Health.